Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Survivors and families of victims from the Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York mass shootings are set to testify before a congressional hearing today. The details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we broke another record yesterday. Uh, I don't know if we're looking forward to today. We'll be checking in with Mike very soon. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is June 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday after work, did you make it out and about? Did you walk outside? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh <laughs> Did you run? Did you go for a run, no. Stephanie? I thought about it. It was a little oh too hot. I'm going to try to get that done earlier today. Ah, so, Mike, uh, one of our mutual friends, uh, Detective Dart, said he went for a run the other day, and his yeah. watch clocked 104 degrees out there. Which, uh, I'm surprised it wasn't even hotter than that, because usually when you're out in the direct sun, obviously you're not just feeling the air temperature, but the sun's heating you up as well. Yeah. So that's why, you know, we always talk about these, the numbers we give are in the shade, obviously. Uh, yeah, 104 yesterday, we can't avoid talking about that. Two days in a row, we, it's not looking like we're going to make it three in a row, but we'll still be up around record high temperatures. There's our morning clouds hanging around here. 78 in town, same thing, Stinson. 79 Pleasanton and actually it looks like those numbers these temperatures are up maybe a degree or two compared to this time yesterday. We still got plenty of humidity out there. And so, yep, we got uh, somewhat of a heat index to deal with right now. 82 at Pleasanton. Same song and dance that we've had the past couple of mornings. The uh, allergens mold is on the low side, although it did go up a little bit in yesterday's count from the previous day. 90 high temperature today or excuse me. <laughs> Wishful thinking that's at noon 101 for a high temperature today, which is going to tie the record for this day. We don't have any heat advisories posted, just not really reaching that criteria, but you know, it's kind of split in here. It's just obviously take it easy if you are outside and don't forget about all those pets. Anything as far as relief in sight? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. A woman facing charges for a fatal drunk driving crash is now sentenced to 10 years probation. Violetta Martinez took a plea deal in court. The case goes back to 2019 when Gavin Wallace was killed. According to court records, Martinez was driving on I-35 when she crashed into Wallace's vehicle. He was thrown from the car and died at the scene. Martinez later failed a field sobriety test. We're going to take a live look at Washington, D.C. this morning. Later today, survivors from the Uvalde school shooting, they are set to testify before a House Committee on Gun Violence. Now, of those testifying, that includes an 11-year-old fourth grader. She played dead during the shooting in order to stay alive. This hearing comes as lawmakers rush to finalize a bipartisan agreement on gun reform. We're going to carry that hearing live later this morning at 9 a.m. For now, ABC's and Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, new video shows 11-year-old Mia Cerillo clutching a blanket as she takes her first plane ever to Washington. The Uvalde shooting survivor will face Congress and recount how she had to cover herself in her classmates' blood and play dead to survive. Victims' families and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings are in Washington for multiple hearings to call on Congress to act on gun reform. My mother's life mattered. And your actions here today will tell us how much it matters to you. Leading up to the hearing, personal and emotional pleas. You're supposed to protect and serve. Teacher Arnolfo Reyes, who was I shot twice myself. by the gunman in Uvalde, says he cannot forgive law enforcement for taking more than an hour to stop the shooter who killed Absolutely. every student in his classroom. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. And actor Matthew McConaughey, a Uvalde native and gun owner at the White House. We need responsible gun ownership, responsible gun ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle to 21. That last item, once a non-starter for Republicans, now under consideration. Two sources telling ABC News Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell privately expressed openness to raising the age to buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. A group of bipartisan senators are aiming to have a compromise on a narrow set of proposals ready by the end of the week. 
Senator McConnell hasn't said anything publicly about the age requirement for AR-15s and privately, sources say, has not pushed for any specific gun policies. M1, ABC News, Washington. Your morning headlines, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, she is meeting with her counterparts from South Korea and Japan. She's emphasizing the United States' commitment to defend our allies and to confront the accelerating nuclear threat from North Korea. The latest top-level meetings between the countries today had come as North Korea apparently presses ahead with preparations for their first nuclear test explosion in nearly five years. U.S. officials say that test could occur in the coming days. The U.S. Senate has voted to advance bipartisan legislation aimed at helping veterans exposed to toxic burn pits during military service. And the deal built on the PACT Act that passed the House earlier this year. It has broad bipartisan support. It will provide care and benefits to millions of veterans suffering devastating effects from burn pit exposure. President Biden's son, Bo, an Iraq war veteran, died in 2015 from brain cancer. The president has said he believes his son's cancer may be linked to burn pit exposure. Biden urged Congress to pass legislation during his State of the Union address earlier this year. The Senate will now take up the legislation with the expectation of final passage later this week. And U.S. security agencies now say Chinese-backed hackers, they've breached major telecommunications companies. So they reportedly exploited known software flaws in routers and other popular networking gear. The FBI, the NSA, and the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they released this new advisory. They say these devices are often overlooked. The victims of the hackings have not yet been disclosed. The Chinese government routinely denies hacking allegations. Time now, 436, 77 degrees out. It is time to get a great gift for Dad this month. We're going to show you the ones that he's going to like and won't break the bank. All right, so the NBA Finals, they continue tonight right here on KSAT. We're going to tell you how they've gone so far and what's coming up next. Becoming an interesting series. Oh, yeah. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking out at I-35 at FM 482. Things are moving there for now at 4.37 a.m. A lot of people on the roads this early. I was a little surprised to see that many cars out there. <laughs> All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 77 degrees now, but if today is like the last couple days or like we expect the next few days, it's going to get hot. We're going to check in with Mike, see how hot it's going to get. Good morning. Welcome back. And hey, happy finals. Yes, the Spurs are not in the finals, but it's still interesting nonetheless. So Golden State Warriors able to get even with the Boston Celtics. They took game two. On Sunday, they won big 107 to 88, and this was after Boston was able to steal a game one in a dramatic fourth quarter comeback. So one of the biggest adjustments that we've seen is that Steve Kerr, head coach of the Warriors, former Spur, he was on Golden State's perimeter defense. So more specifically on Al Horford, who was able to score 26 points in game one in that fourth quarter upset, including a game high six three pointers. Big Al for big six threes. So. That didn't happen in game two. Horford hold to just two points. He didn't even make a three-point attempt. Derek White, yes, we got to throw some spurs in here. Derek White with just 12 after 21 in game one on four of 13 shooting. So now that the series has moved to Boston, the one major adjustment the Celtics have to make, taking care of the ball. In their game two loss, the Warriors in San Francisco, well, the Celtics turned the ball over 19 times. Even if you're not a big basketball fan, you know that's not great because those 19 turnovers resulted in 33 points for the Warriors. Any chance of a comeback went out the window when the Celtics turned the ball over on their first two possessions of the second half. They were outscored 35 to 14 in just the third quarter. So what comes next? Well, we got tip off tonight. It is this evening right here on KSAT from Boston. Game four, staying in Boston on Friday, and then the series shifts back to Golden State on Monday. <laughs> Well, back here at home, Reagan Rattler's baseball team headed to the state tournament for the first time since 2018. This after they were able to defeat Lake Travis in the best of three series, winning the Class 6A Regional Championship. So Aiden Coleman helping build it on their 5-0 lead. Quick grounder to short, but the throw to first in the dirt. Jacob King scoring. Rattlers won it 6-2 in this decisive Game 3. We caught up with the Rattlers as they prepare to face Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A State Semifinals Friday in Round Rock. The last time Reagan went was 2018. Um, we're trying to get it done to 2022. 
And um, I mean, it's a, it's everybody that's at the state tournament's a good team, and uh, as as well as us. And I, th I think we're ready. We're gonna go into it, focus on that game, not worry about the next day, and just play as hard as we can for those seven innings, and hope we come up on top. All right, so big matchup between Reagan and Rockwall Heath set for Friday. Round Rock, 7 p.m., and obviously KSAT 12 Sports will be there. So obviously go Reagan, but back to the finals. Are you rooting for the Warriors or the uh, Celtics? I keep going back and forth. Okay. Because I, mean, I like Steph Curry. You know my mom likes Steph Curry. Yes. Uh, but there's Derek White, just and especially doing awesome on game one. Yeah. Tough. I'll get you one of both jerseys. <laughs> There you go. I'm <laughs> now. Each day. 443, 77 degrees out. And with school ending and Father's Day coming up, you might be on the hunt for the perfect gift. We're going to have a look at which items had the best price this month. As catalytic converter thefts continue to rise, many states are enacting laws that they hope will deter thieves. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. Get out of here. Go. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on catalytic converter thefts. We've seen where they quickly, like NASCAR, they get the jacks, jack them up, cut them off, and get these items. 300 bucks a piece, it's a lucrative night. In California, the LAPD hosting a VIN etching event at a local shopping mall. Residents lining up to have their car's VIN number permanently marked on that targeted car park. Anything that we can do to try to prevent it would be great. Lawmakers are also taking action. According to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, 36 states have proposed bills, 18 of which have enacted laws banning auto recyclers from accepting converters not attached to a vehicle. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to have the expert tips to keep your car protected. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Phoenix, Arizona. All right, so June, Father's Day. So if you're looking for a gift idea for dad this month, my co-host Hage like pointing like, to himself. Yeah. <laughs> Consumer Reports track prices on its top tested products all year long. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us exactly what you can save on right now. June means sizzling temperatures and some pretty hot sales. This year, Father's Day falls on June 19th, and we're already seeing sales on traditional gifts for dads. Nothing says dad like a power tool. This DeWalt cordless drill is the Consumer Reports Best Buy. It's very powerful and on sale for $143 on Amazon. If dad has a green thumb, he can even garden inside year round. The Aero Garden Harvest 360 countertop garden is discounted to $130 dollars at Aero Garden. For new dads and moms, Consumer Reports says this Kiko Bravo Trio stroller is a best buy. It's $400 at Amazon. Bye bye baby and Walmart. Next, you can keep up the curb appeal with a string trimmer that doesn't need pricey gasoline. This Ego battery-powered string trimmer is down to $179 at Amazon and Lowe's. Around the end of June, you'll start to see July 4th sales kick off at all the major retailers, and you can expect big savings on big ticket items like large appliances and mattresses. This Bosch Ascenta dishwasher is a Consumer Reports Best Buy. It's $699. If you're going to be spending time outdoors, don't forget the sunscreen and the bug spray. Fortunately, June is a good time to find it on sale so you can stock up. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the rose with Trans Guide. Max and I were a little surprised to see. All right, this makes more sense. There. <laughs> There's a few less people yeah. out there. We saw, we see what a truck, a couple of vehicles earlier, though. It was crazy. Maybe a lot of people getting out for that early commute. Uh, well, I got to tell you what, if you are out and about, whatever you got to do, I would do it early because Mike, yesterday, even walking to my car, I feel like I got some kind of like tan the yes. 20 yards that I walked. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, when you're outside like that, you're in the direct sun, you're being heated up by the sun, not only feeling just the temperature of the, of the air around. And then you've got, you know, walking around to the grocery store parking lot or something like that all that heat coming off you so yeah just take it easy I, I was distracted a little bit going into that because 11 days till father's day just just letting everyone yeah. know letting everyone we know. saw you raise your hand during any of the Osterhage family watching Mike do you anything on the wish list week from Sunday um 
<laughs> Do we have enough time? <laughs> Gift card. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to avoid talking about the heat because it is sticking around and it is inevitable. There's our morning clouds hanging around here. And yep, we are just in case we're keeping track. If you're keeping track day number eight yesterday, we hit 104 again, second day in a row. And that was a record. We are going to be tying the record today. 80 right now is what it feels like with the humidity. 82 at Pleasanton, 70s in portions of the hill country. At least the, I mean, this is kind of split in hairs, but we'll take anything we can get. At least the dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere are down ever so slightly out in the hill country. We haven't changed from yesterday, so kind of a push as far as that goes. Still enough humidity to where you notice it when you step outside. We'll keep the clouds around this morning. Drop down maybe a couple of degrees here or there. Mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning. And then we'll see a lot more sunshine make it up in through the mid and upper 80s in through late morning and by noon up to 90 and it won't be as windy. We'll have a nice breeze out there, but as Mark has described it the past couple of days, it's like a hair dryer on you with this hot temperature. You know, again, walking across a parking lot or something like that. It just it has no help at all as far as the wind is concerned. 101 for a high temperature later on today. Plenty of sunshine and that will tie the record for today's date. All right, at least we get somewhat of a break in the humidity in the afternoon, so we won't have that much of a heat index to deal with. When you get these dew point temperatures that will be dropping down below 60, they'll come back up in the morning and do the same thing tomorrow. So as far as the heat index, it may be just a degree or two above the actual air temperature, so it's not going to be quite as bad if you're in the shade, of course, but uh, it's still going to feel like around 107 down there, Catula, and we don't have any heat advisories formally posted. But again, that's just uh, you, know, you still got to take it easy if you're outside. Of course, the nice thing is in the afternoons, we are going to have dew point temperatures in the 50s for the rest of the week going into the weekend. So good news, it won't be in just a ridiculously high heat index to deal with. But bad news is the dry air does heat up pretty easily, so that means we'll still be up in the triple digit temperatures all the way through the weekend and in through the first part of next week at least. 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature then 101. That's going to tie the record. Bit of a breeze out there. Next seven days, we stay in triple digit range and uh, tying the record today. Next good shot at a record is going to be on Friday. Close to it over the weekend and then going into Monday, of course, Tuesday is flag day and I don't think we're going to be hitting a record that day. You know, no relief really inside. A couple of computer models keep us triple digits next week. Some have us going into the upper 90s. Still, it's going to be hot. I knew we were in trouble in May when we had five days in a row. I'm just yeah. I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. <laughs> just a perfect report left, card, though. Left, yeah, if it was a report card. Right? <laughs> 103. Uh, no. like, All that extra credit. Come All on. That extra credit. Thank you, Mike. Just about 453, 77 degrees out. And coming up next, the first look yes. at a new Adam Sandler basketball drama, which lists real life NBA star LeBron James as one of its producers. Good morning and welcome back. In your spotlight, a new Marvel series debuting today. I had no idea. On Disney Plus. So this is what I've been excited about. Netflix releasing a new Adam Sandler basketball movie. I know. And LeBron James helping out there. Yeah. The as well. So we'll have to take a look. And for the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Do you know what you are? I'm a superhero. Say hello to Miss Marvel. Iman Vellani stars in the newest Marvel TV series, making its debut today. She plays the MCU's first Muslim superhero, Kamala Khan, a teen having some trouble fitting in before discovering her own power. Vellani, an MCU superfan herself, tells us joining this universe was amazing, but it wasn't easy, and she got some pretty great support. The fact that, you know, Brie Larson and, and like Simu and, and Chris Pratt, they all just made themselves so available for me to kind of ask my questions and then just vent if I wanted to. It, was, it just really meant the world. And yeah, it's crazy. The people that are on my posters back home are now my friends. Miss Marvel premieres today on Disney+. Plus. I love this game. I live this game. Also out today, the Adam Sandler basketball drama Hustle, which lists real-life NBA star LeBron James as one of its producers. It's just about family, about perseverance, about love, about commitment. Um, and yes, basketball is the centerfold, but so many life lessons in this, and I'm excited to, for the world to see it. You can find Hustle on Netflix.
One of the most coveted roles in Hollywood, reportedly, has a star. Variety says Ozark in Inventing Anna's Julia Garner will play Madonna in the upcoming movie about the material girl's life. And it's 808s and birthday cake for Ye. The rapper formerly known as Kanye West is 45 today, while three-time Emmy winner Juliana Margulies is 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I think it could have given a little more love to the Adam Sandler movie, but that's fine. Time now, 457, 77 degrees out. And according to AAA, the average price for gas is more than $5 per gallon in more than a quarter of the country. How the Treasury Secretary is getting involved in stopping this trend. And Stephen Cavazos is in the building, in the room. We're going to check in with him with a live look out of Trans Guide right now. What can we expect for the rest of the day? Stephen will tell you in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Funerals continue in Uvalde today, and while that's happening, a special group set to testify before lawmakers in Washington, D.C. And as gas prices continue to skyrocket, the Treasury Secretary is urging lawmakers to do something fast. I'm going to take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, so it's 77 now. That's fine. It's, a, it's like brisk. Considering what, we, what we've seen the last few yes. days, what we expect to see today. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is June 8th, but really, yes. it feels like July, even August. August, actually. I mean, we're, we're used to hitting these temperatures much later in the summer, and I guess it's not officially summer yet, but it definitely oh. feels like it. Right, Mike? No, we've still got, uh, you know, a week and a half or so until wow. summer officially begins on the, the 21st. And even the temperatures that we've been seeing, all these triple digits, are even hotter than what the historically hottest time of the year is, which is those uh, first couple of weeks of August. 78 degrees right now out there at the airport, and the bottom number is at 70. Dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere, which means, yep, there's a... A lot of humidity out there and is that same kind of 24 hour cycle that we go through more humidity in the morning. It drops down somewhat in the afternoon and yep, we are going to be up in the triple digits again today. Good news is we're not going to hit 104 like we have the past couple of days. We set another record yesterday. The aquifer, another big, big hit down nine tenths of a foot. Still obviously in stage two water restrictions and mold is on the low side. That's the only allergen that was showing up yesterday. All right, with the humidity hanging around here this morning, of course, we do have somewhat of a heat index to deal with. So 78 feels like 80, 82 in Pleasanton and 79 up the road in New Braunfels. Uh, it just it just kind of wears on you, you know, with all these hot temperatures. Some clouds around this morning, obviously very, very warm. And then throughout the rest of today, mostly sunny skies. 101, that's going to tie the record for today's date. So three records in a row have either been set or will be tied later on today. We're going to stick around with or triple digits, I should say, will be sticking around throughout the rest of the week going into the weekend. Still very, very hot all weekend long, and we're looking at triple digits at least into the first part of next week. Take a look ahead and see if there's any, any sort of changes coming up anytime later. Not sooner, but later. <laughs> Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Good morning, sir. Not a whole lot, Mike. Thankfully, things are looking okay over here in the traffic lab, and out on the roadways, a lot better. Let's go ahead and get a look around town, and you can see what you can expect right now for your morning commute. US 90 at 410. Again, just some quiet roads. I-10 and Hildebrand drove by there a little earlier, and then actually enjoyed the drive to work today. So, you'll probably do the same, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. You can see just, again, lots of pavement, and of course, lots of green on the screen. But we always know that there are several active construction spots to be on the lookout for. Uh, this is new. This crash icon that popped up near Von Army near 410. We'll have to find out what's going on there and give you those details a little bit later on. But thankfully right now, still early in the morning to where we're not seeing so much of an impact for anybody's drive time. And if your destination is the Alamo City, well, let's check out those travel times because a journey from Bernie in those eastbound lanes, we're looking at a 25 minute drive time in the eastbound lanes of I-10. Now coming in from Mulverde, no need to hurry. 28 minutes on 281 South southbound and we're looking at 26 minutes if you're traveling on I-35 southbound coming in from New Braunfels. So we are just about green across the board there, but back here, lots of pavement again. We'll continue to watch the roads closely, but keep in mind active construction spots. So we'll give you some of those details coming up a little later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters working a fire at a bicycle shop overnight. So take a look 
All of this happened around 10 last night. This is the 1800 block of East Commerce. It's, not, it's near South Monumental Street on the city's east side. Firefighters on the scene telling us it was an electrical issue that caused a small fire in that repair station at the bike shop, a bike shop connected to a CBD shop. Now, firefighters did have some trouble getting into the building, but they were quickly able to knock down the fire once they did make entry. A damage mainly to the content in the bike shop because the building was mostly brick. We're remembering Uvalde. Today's services will be held for 10-year-old Annabelle Rodriguez. The funeral service will be held at noon at Rushing Knowles with a ceremony following at Hillcrest Cemetery. All right, and while all of this is happening, we know a lot of people testifying in front of Congress today. That is why we're going to take a live look at Washington, D.C. this morning. Later today, like I said, survivors and families of victims killed inside Robb Elementary, they will be at our nation's capital testifying about gun violence. Alexandria Lexi Rubio's parents, they will be sharing their testimony virtually. Meanwhile, a fourth grader who covered herself in her friend's blood and pretended to be dead, she's testifying in person at the Rayburn House office building. Dr. Roy Guerrero, Uvalde's only pediatrician, he will testify as well in person. He told ABC News it is his duty to the children to share his experience. As we say in the Hippocratic Oath, to do no harm, right? And I feel doing nothing is being neglectful to that oath. U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform is made up of Democratic and Republican members. Each witness on the first panel will testify for five minutes. Committee members won't be asking questions out of respect for their time and the trauma that they've been through. We're going to have live updates from the hearing on GMSA at 9 a.m. and, of course, KSAT.com. At the state capitol, Governor Greg Abbott has steered away from gun restrictions. Instead, he has focused on school security. I Watch Texas is a system that allows you to alert authorities online, over the phone, or through an app. You would use it if you see anything or anyone acting suspiciously that could indicate school safety related threats. So it's been around for years. However, the governor wants the Texas Education Agency, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and DPS to do more to promote the program. You can find out more about it on the website, which is iwatchtx.org. And our coverage in Uvalde continues online. We have the list of visitations and funerals on our website. At KSAT.com. We also have a list of the official funds for the victims in Uvalde if you would like to donate. Now, the latest on inflation, and if you've been to the gas station, record high prices. Looks like things may actually get worse before they get better. U.S. Secretary is calling on Congress to take action. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, Americans are spending $700 million more on gas every day than they were at this time last year. We now have 14 different states where the average has already surpassed that $5 gallon mark and seeing some tremendous increases. In just the last week, the average price for gas in Michigan jumping 51 cents. In Indiana, up 48 cents. In Ohio, 46 cents. There's no relief in sight due to soaring demand overseas and supply concerns due in part to the war in Ukraine. And now hurricane season could send prices surging even higher. This overall era of high prices could stick around for several years. Keep in mind, if a hurricane hits refineries or oil production, it could take months for supply to get back to normal. Airfares are also climbing due to higher fuel costs. The average cost of a domestic round trip is now $410 compared to $283 last June. We now are entering a period of transition. On Capitol Hill Tuesday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called the inflation we're seeing unacceptable. She urged Congress to provide more affordable housing and bring down prescription drug prices. And she pushed back against those who blame the Biden administration's spending policies, including pandemic stimulus checks, for fueling today's inflation. In designing a policy, there are various risks that need to be taken into account. Of course, inflation was one of them, but the overwhelming risk was that Americans would be scarred by a deep and long recession. And back to gas prices, we're fast approaching a national average of just about $5 per gallon. Analysts say that milestone will likely prompt more families to take a closer look at their spending habits. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Yeah.
I'm like doing everything I can to hit cruise control, yeah. go from point A to point B. Walk places, bike maybe. Yeah, I'm like limping places right now. Time now, 509, 77 degrees out. And the heat continues to be a big story. Haven for Hope is offering even more help to the unsheltered. They're going to offer mist fans in the courtyard and air conditioning inside their facility. However, they say they are in need of summer clothing, including shorts and t-shirts for men, women, and children. You can take your donation to the center on One Haven for Hope Way. And next, we check in on Harini Logan, finally back in San Antonio. Remember, this comes after winning the Scripps National Spelling Bee. I watched some of the clips, the speed round specifically. Oh my goodness. Super impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 77 degrees for now, but you know, just a hint, we broke a record yesterday and the day before, and I think the day before as well. <laughs> Hang in there, guys. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio's Harini Logan officially back home this morning. This after she won the Scripps National Spelling Bee. She arrived back at San Antonio International Airport around 1045 last night. So the 14 year old just completed an interview on live with Kelly and Ryan. That was yesterday. And that's actually where she got the trophy that she was holding. She will get the real spelling bee trophy later. Now she won a little over $50,000 in cash and prizes. Oh, right, so she said her. she plans to save the majority of it for college, but also interested in investing in the stock market, giving back to some of the community to advocate for literacy. Now, Logan has been known as one of the country's best spellers for years, having competed in the last fully in-person spelling bee three years ago. And this year, she spelled 22 words correctly during the 90-second spell-off, which was intense, beating her <laughs> component, opponent by seven. Now, we're going to hear more from her coming up a little later. That was so cool. Anyway, first off, I couldn't even fathom spelling those words. I couldn't even say them, and then she just knocked them out. I was having trouble just keeping up with the spelling. Yeah. I mean, I was like, wow, even the judges have a tough time. I was like, what, did, what, what, did, what just happened? Yeah, very good, very impressive. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Time now, 514, 77 degrees out. And still ahead, how Instagram is making it easier for you to highlight specific posts on your feed. Plus, have you seen this yet, the new Taco Bell? Mm -mm. It kind of looks like, and I'm not what? trying to like minimize it. That's what I said. <laughs> it's like a bank. I said it's like a you know, bank teller. So Taco Bell going high tech with new drive throughs complete with, yes, look, you're looking at vertical lifts to deliver your food. We're going to explain. Uh, how will the nachos be, though? Welcome to Allstate, where the safer you drive, the more you save. Like Rachel here. How am I looking? Looking good. The most cautious driver we got. Am I there? No, keep keep going. How's that? I'll say when. Now? Is that good? Lots of cars have backup cameras now, you know. Those are for amateurs. There we go. Like a glove, girl. Safe driving and drive-wise can save you 40% with Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. I tried a laxative that's both gentle and fast. Great tasting Dogalax soft chews works naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes. Puts you comfortably in control. Dogalax soft chews. With Golo, I've lost 13 inches in my waist. They're out of here. You eat normal food. You're not eating diet food. I'm doing something good for me, finally. Go to golo.com to lose weight and get healthier. In today's Tech Bytes, improved sound for YouTube TV. There is now 5.1 audio support for Google TV, Android TV, and Roku streaming devices. The immersive audio should kick in automatically for users with compatible hardware. Instagram has joined TikTok and Twitter by allowing users to pin three posts or reels to their profiles. Once something is pinned, it will appear at the top left corner of your grid. Additional pins will move earlier ones to the right. Finally, a one-of-a-kind Taco Bell restaurant opens today in a Minneapolis suburb. Four drive through lanes have vertical delivery tubes which bring orders from the kitchen right to your vehicle. Customers can order at a kiosk in the drive through lane or through an app. Taco Bell hinted the new restaurant will be coming to other states. Liv Moss, those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, so what are your thoughts on the high-tech Taco Bell? The nachos. Nachos. Yeah, All about the nachos. I, I, I don't know like how well everything's going to keep in place unless, oh. unless they use extra containers to keep 
stuff separate, you know, for, I for messy they stuff. Figured out the logic yeah. and logistics. Yeah. I mean, but it's neat looking. I mean, yeah. sure. Stephen Cavazos, say? I was always a, uh, a club chalupa guy. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't say that I'm a Taco Bell guy. I prefer my okay. own tacos at Ooh. home. I'm just going to say, and that's just me, but yeah. you know, not everybody's like that. Some people Let like their... Well, <laughs> when Mark brings his brisket in. Oh, we're still wow. waiting for that. So. Wait that long. Yeah, okay, well, we'll see when that <laughs> happens, all right? Let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways right now. No rush if you're trying to head to grab your fast food right now. US 98 Couples, it's been off to a pretty gentle start. You can see 281 at Grayson, not a whole lot to talk about thankfully uh, and but you can see there are a few folks out there getting their morning started early with us so just remember to drive safe buckle up both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road so you can see right there we are seeing just a lot of active construction spots this crash right here not picking that up on the trans guide camera so uh, I'll have to continue to try to keep a close eye on that but right now near 410 not causing any issues for drivers just yet but we'll watch it closely as always make sure you plan your commute there are several active construction spots as I just mentioned 281 on the north side of San Antonio. It's never too early to start talking about the weekend. Some bridge work is taking place. That is starts uh, Friday, June 10th and should be wrapping up the next day on Saturday, June 11th. That is from overnight, 9 in the evening to 6 in the morning. During that time, drivers, you can expect a full closure of the Wilderness Oaks intersection. But of course, that information is posted on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. Easy way to get there. Grab your phone, open your camera app, scan this QR code. I think we're going to bring it up right now. Give it a few moments. Tap the center of your screen that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that will have the latest on any closures that are taking place in your area or anything else that could impact your drive time. Just remember, scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find that list of closures right there. Good reminder. Mike has something. Back to, to the yes. tacos. Oh, okay. uh, no, I figured it out, Mike. So we got Mark's brisket, Steven's tacos, brisket tacos. Well, we were talking about, we were that, talking but about that, but don't wow. wait for Mark to bring it in. You Oh, you know, make the first move. You drop the gauntlet. Like, you're gonna guilt. <laughs> first of all, you're gonna guilt him into it, and everybody's gonna be like, "Wow, Stephen brought in tacos, mm. Mark." <laughs> See, and well, you're gonna be the hero, and so that way, know, yeah. So, what Mike, what can we there. bring in? I, I'm just a visitor here, Mike. What are you I'm bringing just in? A visitor. Here. Yeah, what are you bringing in? <laughs> Boy, it's going to be hot again today, <laughs> and uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here. Why did this all of a sudden get get thrown over to me? I want him to get the attention. Mm. I want Stephen to get the attention. It's potluck. Clouds Everybody around, brings and, something. Uh, some warm temperatures. <laughs> we've got a uh, heat index right now up to 80. Same thing, Stinson, 82, Pleasanton, and 79 in New Braunfels. Some, and that's the because the the humidity comes back up in the morning hours, overnight, early morning, and then drops down somewhat in the afternoon, and that helps out with some of our morning clouds. So we'll be mid 70s, maybe, you know, fluctuate a degree or two in the next couple of hours and then up through the upper 70s, low to mid 80s through mid morning up to 90 at noon. A lot more sunshine around here. An OK breeze, probably not as breezy as the past couple of days, although that wind sure doesn't do much to help kind of alleviate just these scorching hot temperatures because it is just like a furnace blowing on you. We're going to make it up to 101 later on today. That will tie the record for today's day. The past couple of days, of course, we have hit 104. So here's the uh, satellite loop going back 12 hours, and you can see some of these low clouds move in this darker shade of gray that comes on in here. They'll be, uh, you know, of course, sticking around through about mid morning and then starting to clear on out. Pretty good thunderstorms up there, northern portions of the panhandle, and there is somewhat of a, a front which is trying to scoot down here into the northern part of the state. It's not going to make it down here at all. And then you look elsewhere around the country and most everything you can see any bit of rain from Pacific Northwest all the way across the central portion of the country. Everything's moving just about straight west to east. And so with that type of a pattern, call it kind of a zonal pattern, you don't get any changes really in the weather. We don't get anything as far as any storm systems, any changes. So we keep the heat around here, and that is definitely in the forecast. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today up to 101. That's going to tie the record for today's date. Mostly sunny, breezy, not as windy as the past couple of days. And no heat advisories are posted for today. But of course, you, you got to take it easy if you're outside. And we keep the triple digits around here all the way through the weekend and going into next week and on a couple of the days today. Uh, let's see Friday, maybe Monday. We're going to be much closer to tying the records. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, it's kind of like, hey, if we're going to be in hundreds, might as well set records or you know, <laughs> I, might as well happen on the weekend. I, I don't know if that makes any difference. Yeah, when we hit these these records, so. Hmm. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll power through it's it. It's bad enough that it's triple digits. Yeah. It's hard to believe that in April, 
Yeah, right. In April, like Fiesta time, which was early this year, we were wearing jackets. It was morning. chilly, yeah, yeah. That, that morning for the Battle of Flowers. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> yep. I think the important part is just stay safe. Be smart. You cannot beat the heat. Let's go back to talking about uh, Kavasas' uh, tacos. I'm so. waiting for you to bring something <laughs> in here, Mike. We'll think about it. <laughs> he needs to be the hero. Time now, 524, 77 degrees up. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Julia Garner to reportedly play Madonna in a new film and a first look at the Predator prequel, Prey. From Ozark to The Material Girl, Variety reports Julia Garner has been offered the lead in Universal's biopic about Madonna. The Emmy-winning actress had been considered a front-runner for the highly coveted role. Madge herself, the queen of reinvention, is set to direct the film. Kamala Khan's parents get a little too into her MCU fandom in Ms. Marvel, but for Mohan Kapoor, who plays her dad, it was a blast, including all that green makeup. It was so much fun, and they said, is it okay if we do it here? I said, you better do it there. It has to be perfect all over. So, I mean, they wanted to only just do it over here. I said, no, take it all the way here up. I don't want the sleeve to move and to show, you know, let's do it like it, that he actually believes he's the Hulk. Ms. Marvel debuts today on Disney+. Plus. It knows how to hunt. I know how to survive. Here's your first look at the Predator prequel, Prey, set 300 years ago as a Comanche warrior fights to protect her tribe against one of the first Predators to land on Earth. Whatever did this, I can kill it. Prey debuts August 5th on Hulu. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That looks good. Looks intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm intrigued. All right, Me time too. now, 528, 77 degrees out. And still head on GMSA in the aftermath of numerous mass shootings. Lawmakers are negotiating gun reform on Capitol Hill. We're going to have a preview of today's testimony from survivors coming up next. Families of victims and survivors of the Uvalde school shooting set to give testimony in front of lawmakers later this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at a calm 77 degrees for now, but things will heat up this afternoon. I like how you say calm. Yes, because we're going to enjoy that 77. Yeah. You know, you walk out, you're like, oh, it's going to be a great day, but yeah. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And if you have things to do, errands to run, I would try to get them out of the way as soon as possible. Right. Early that, or late. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very good idea. And even, uh, you know, going into the evening hours, we still stay in the triple digit range, upper 90s, all the way in through just about the time the sun goes down. So uh, especially when you think about if you have to, you know, take the dog for a walk or something, do it earlier on in the morning. Plus, when there's a little bit of leftover cloud cover around here, that helps because you're not getting just heated up by the sun as well as feeling the air temperature, which is right now 78 degrees. Dew point stands at 70. A lot of humidity out there. We go through that usual, keep talking about the 24 hour cycle, less humidity in the afternoon, more in the morning. Heat index right now, upper 70s, low 80s. So add just two, three degrees to some of these numbers. And at least with the humidity dropping down somewhat in the afternoon, we're not going to have just outrageously high heat index readings. Just maybe a degree or two above the actual air temperature. Although, I'm sure it doesn't help when we're up in the triple digits. Mold is on the low side from yesterday's pollen count. And yep, we are going to be hitting 101 today. Least we break the streak of two days in a row, 104, both records. Today is going to be tying the record and got a couple more that are going to be uh, we're pushing at them and keeping triple digits around through the rest of the week. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Hey, Mike, uh, things are looking OK from these trans guide cameras, but let's take a drive around town. You can see just a few folks getting their morning started with this. Uh, and maybe some of them are getting their errands out of the way early so they can avoid that heat. But right now things are picking up. And while trans guide cameras are showing some quiet roadways, can't say the same for that map. Let's go ahead and just take you right to it because there is a crash that was reported right here at I-10 westbound near West Avenue. Uh, I'm trying to get our friends at Transguide to show us uh, the conditions out there, but we are able to see some flashing lights, some road flares, and again, hopefully we can bring that shot to you a little bit later on. But thankfully, uh, it doesn't look like it's causing any problems. Again, that's in the westbound lanes of I-10, so if you're trying to make your way up to 1604, you'll likely encounter that. So just remember, move over, slow down for those first responders that are out there. Uh, we'll work to bring you that information as the morning does go on, but thankfully elsewhere, 
looking pretty quiet around town as we get that bird's eye view of the map. The big thing is going to always be those active construction spots. And as the morning stays quiet, we'll continue to bring you that information. But right now, travel times aren't looking too bad just yet. So keep in mind, though, 31 minutes if you're coming in from Seguin and those westbound lanes of I-10. Lavernia, right now, just 21 minutes if you're trying to get into the downtown San Antonio area and a 28 minute drive time heading in from Floatisville. So our friends uh, don't really have any issues to worry about in terms of the commute. But right here back in the, at home, we're seeing just some quiet roadways. Again, the big problem back on I-10 uh, near West Avenue. We'll work to bring you that shot a little bit later on, guys. Hey, Steven. New this morning, fire has caused damage to home on the south side, and firefighters say there's a good chance did not start on its own. No one was living in the home near the corner of Vincent Street and Palo Alto Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, are they calling this an arson case? Well, firefighters never used that word, but they did say that investigators are taking a long, hard look at this fire. They say there was no one living in the home and there were no utilities, so really no reason this fire would have started by itself. Uh, the fire was in a home. It's difficult to see from here, but if we can show you the video so you can get a better look. Uh, the fire broke out around 4 o'clock this morning. Firefighters say that they found heavy fire on the outside of the home. Uh, they, the home was boarded up, and again, no one living here. They called it a rent home and they say it had been vacated recently. They were able to knock down those flames really quickly and they say that there wasn't a whole lot of damage from this fire on the inside, but there had been a fire there before. Uh, again, they do have investigators here. Uh, they are really the only uh, fire units that are left here at the scene. Uh, the fire investigators, they've been looking in and around the home. We also have a number of police officers here, but again, the fire is out and fire investigators are trying to figure out exactly how it started. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Taking a live look now at the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. That is where the United States House Committee on Oversight and Reform set to hold a hearing today on gun violence. And that starts at 9 this morning, and we're going to bring you live coverage as it happens right here on KSAT. In the meantime, our Lee Waldman on Capitol Hill discussing what we expect to hear out of the hearing. The bipartisan committee is going to hear directly from the people impacted by mass shootings, including the families of victims and survivors of the Robb Elementary School shooting. There needs to be a change. There's no doubt about it. They know. They know. It's been exactly two weeks since Amory Jo Garza was killed inside of her classroom at Robb Elementary. Now her father, Alfred Garza, is demanding change by elected officials. It's about people right now. It's what it's about. And... Um, there's no gun out there that's worth more than my daughter's life. While he won't be present at Wednesday's hearing inside of the Rayburn House office building on Capitol Hill Wednesday, fourth grader Maya Cerillo will be on the first panel. She's previously described covering herself in her friend's blood and pretending to be dead so she wouldn't be shot. Dr. Roy Guerrero, Uvalde's only pediatrician, will be here too, telling ABC News it's his duty to the children to testify. As we say in the Hippocratic Oath, to do no harm, right? And I feel doing nothing is being neglectful to that oath. The parents of 10-year-old Alexandria Lexi Rubio will testify virtually. The U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform is made up of Democratic and Republican members. The Texas members have all shared their condolences for the families on social media outlets, but have not shied from sharing what they believe the issue is. North Texas Congressman Pat Fallon writing in part, quote, we must harden our classrooms. Children should feel safe when they go to school, but taking everyone's guns is not the answer, unquote. Senator John Cornyn is not on the committee, but when asked about raising the age limit on assault style weapons, he says there are several discussions in the works. I think a, a focus on mental health and criminal background history is probably going to be the most productive. Each witness in the first panel will only testify for five minutes. Committee members won't be asking any questions out of respect for their time and the trauma they experienced. On Capitol Hill, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, a group of about 2,300 people on their way to the United States after leaving a city in southern Mexico. The United Nations High Commissioner says... For refugees, the group is comprised mostly of Venezuelans, but also include migrants from Nicaragua, Cuba, El Salvador, and Honduras. Now, officials say the group is mostly families and children. This caravan gathered partially in protest of immigration policies 
and said it would be weeks before they arrived at the United States southern border, assuming they all make it here. Oh, caravans often dwindle in size as they head north. In Virginia, authorities evacuated more than 100 passengers, including children, from a cruise ship after it caught on fire. Students from a kindergarten and fifth grade class were among the roughly 110 people on board the Spirit of Norfolk. That was yesterday. Now, crews towed the vessel to Naval Station Norfolk and used foam to help put out the remaining flames. They say the flames were mostly on the interior of the ship. There are no reports of injuries. All right, from throwing passes in the Super Bowl to serving up delicious burgers. Yes, I said that right. Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes now a proud owner of a Whataburger location. So the location opened just yesterday in Kansas City. Yes, Kansas City, not Texas. It is the first one directly associated with Pat Mahomes and the ownership group KMO Burger. As with other Whataburger openings, this one was expected to be a big enough deal, causing actual traffic disruptions in the area. So police actually proactively instituted traffic flow changes to last throughout the weekend. So I'm not sure wow. if, if the people in Kansas City were so excited that there was a Whataburger or that it was Pat Mahomes dishing up the burgers. I'm going to guess a little bit of both. I mean, here in San Antonio, I mean, we, we almost need a traffic control <laughs> around one of burgers, True. even without Patrick. So a little bit of both. A little bit of both. 540, 77 degrees out. And coming up next, why many farmers and ranchers in South Texas say using AR-15s is such an important tool in their line of work. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Like we've been saying, 77 degrees now. Please enjoy it while it lasts because, oof, triple digits. Good morning and welcome back. So lately, we've been talking a lot about AR-15s, and a lot of it has obviously been negative. However, they say that AR-15s is an effective tool for ranchers and farmers in South Texas. RJ Marcus has that story. Joseph Meyer works with South Texas farmers and ranchers who hires helicopter service to shoot and kill feral hogs. The AR-15 is used quite a bit uh, from the air and from the ground. The AR-15 is also used by state wildlife officials who conduct daily operations to control the wild hog population. So ground shooting not only removes individual pigs, but also sends a signal to other pigs in the sounder that that's not a safe place. Mike Bodenchuk is the state director for the Cooperative Texas Wildlife Services Program. He says these invasive species cause millions of dollars in damages to land and crops. We estimate damage to agriculture and natural resources in excess of $500 million a year in Texas alone. And while the state uses different methods to treat the problem, weapons like the AR-15 remain one of the department's most effective tools. Last year, we removed over 51,000 feral pigs to protect crops and agriculture. Meyer is a landowner also and believes more needs to be done for gun regulation, but eliminating the AR-15s altogether is not the answer. Restriction laws on age and stuff like that could make a difference. Mr. Meyer has been in business out here in Jordanton for nearly 20 years, speaking with many farmers and ranchers. He's taken many of them out there on helicopter hog hunting trips, and he says that the use of an AR-15, according to these farmers and ranchers, is one of the most effective ways to control the feral hog population. And while the debate over the use of AR-15s remains front and center, Meyer and others feel that these types of firearms are needed for the livelihood of many people in rural farming areas. If the control were not in place, both landowners and government control, we would lose some of our agricultural production, which is our second biggest uh, commodity in Texas. RG Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 545, 77 degrees out. And coming up next, the Animal Defense League is Aww. standing by with a pet that really wants to go to a new home. Well, a couple of them there. Look at these three little kitty cats. They are sweet as can be. Our dear friend Julie is here. And who do we have here? Aren't they precious? The oh my gosh. Going. We'll get a triple dose of cuteness this morning. So we've got three kittens that are available for adoption at the Animal Defense League. Mike, you are holding Yubaba. This gray baby is Ponyo. And our little cream precious baby is Hal. 
Feel free to rename if you'd like to. I know, right? <laughs> you know, and the nice thing uh, about kittens uh, and cats, two, three, basically the same as one. I mean, they'll all use the same litter box, the same feed, and they kind of take care of each other, so you don't really know. And it is kitten season, obviously. It's I big mean, time kitten season, them, so. and you're exactly right, Mike. Um, actually, in all the catteries right now, we have literature out about how adopting uh, multiple kittens, there's a lot of benefits to that. They mm -hmm. entertain each yeah. other. They're so cute. They play. It's like the most fun thing you've ever seen. Okay, and you want to brag a little bit and give a special thank you, right? We do. I want to jump up and down again, but I'll refrain so I don't scare my babies. Um, we want to thank um, mostly the community and, well, mostly April Ansira and the auto group and mm -hmm. her auto group because I don't know if the community's heard, but we won $100,000. And that is um, thanks to April Ansira and everyone who, who voted for us as often as they possibly could for Ansira Gives Back. So that's going to save, really, it, it, over 2,000 pets coming into wow. our care, we'll be able to get initial medical exams, assessment, and rescue. Okay. So it, it's really like a okay. high impact gift. Con congratulations. <laughs> and if you would like more information on these three little babies or all the other kitties and puppies they have out there at the Animal Defense League, 11300 at Nacogdoches Paul Jolly Center for Pet Adoptions. Give them a call, 655-1481-adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Gotta hand it to you guys. That's a lot to handle those three kittens, but uh, all of them named after Studio Ghibli films. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, let's get a look at the roadways right now because they are looking pretty cool as well. You can see 281 at Jones Maltzberger. The morning is off. People are moving. No problems to report just yet. We did talk about a crash that was reported earlier off of I-10 near West Avenue. It does look like that has already cleared out, but you can see there at 281 at Grayson, 1604 at Pat Booker. Things are fine as we're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour, but let's get a look at the and you can see right there, nothing to talk about other than those active construction spots. As I mentioned, we want to make sure that you plan your commute accordingly. So let's go ahead and talk about what's taking place here off Northwest Military Highway. I see this all the time, that utility work. And people sometimes forget to switch over to the lanes when those digital signs urge them to, hey, watch out for those uh, those crews out there. So currents, this is currents until Friday, June 10th. We'll see crews out there from 7 in the morning to 6 in the evening. But keep in mind, they have to get their material materials out there a little bit earlier, so make sure to watch out for that. There'll be single lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. So again, just as a reminder, make sure you plan your commute accordingly. And again, watch out for those crews who are working to improve the roadways. But back on these highways, things are looking great so far, but we'll see what we uh, find out coming up at 6 a.m., guys. Maybe a lot of people out on the roads trying to get their errands done early before yeah. the heat you know, good idea. Comes Very out good idea. Classes. It's almost <laughs> overwhelming when you step outside. Yes. In the yes. afternoon. It's just like, wow. I mean, it just, yeah, it can, it can get you. So you got to really take it easy. And that, uh, you know, even though we don't have anything specific or formally posted as far as any heat advisories today, obviously take it easy and all the precautions. 78 in town right now, since in 78, 79 in Castroville, a normal low temperature this time of year, 72 degrees. Obviously, we're way above that. Got a lot of humidity around here, and that's what gives us a slight bit of a heat index this morning at about two, three degrees to some of the temperatures. We have our clouds and the high humidity, which tends to hold temperatures from dropping down too much. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees this morning, and then the sun is going to continue to squeeze through those clouds, and clouds will dissipate for the most part. 90 at noon, and then we make it up in through the 90s and get all the way up to 101 later on today. That's going to tie the record. At least it won't be 104 like we had past couple of days, but we are going to keep these triple digit temperatures around all the way through the rest of the week going into the weekend and even next week. Now there are a couple of long range computer models that try and shave even a few more degrees off these numbers by the mid to latter part of next week. That's still, I think, kind of a, a wait and see type situation because this high, which the sun just went down, the lights just went out on that, but we're having a couple little problems here, technical difficulties. The high is going to remain in place. There we go. And it will just continue to sit right on top of us, keeps the main flow of the jet well up there to the north of us. This means we are not seeing any changes in the forecast whatsoever with that thing just kind of sitting there pressing down on the atmosphere. And as we go into next week, though, it is going to start to, to scooch off to the east a bit more. So we get more of this return flow off the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So 
hopefully, or in, in the perfect situation, that would then help to knock temperatures down somewhat, but it won't stay there for long because it looks like it's going to start to uh, shift back off to the west as we go into the latter part of the week, which just means basically heating things up still around here, keeping it very hot today, 90 at noon, and then it's high temperature gets up to 101 ties the record for today. And like I said, we are going to remain in triple digit range close to records each and every day all the way through the weekend and into next week. Of course, flag day on Tuesday. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, that high stakes hearing on Capitol Hill. The families and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings are calling on Congress to act, including an 11 year old from Robb Elementary School that survived. And gas prices nearing a national average of $5 a gallon, what the soaring prices could mean for the overall economy. And Johnny Depp's lawyers sit down for the first interview since the verdict. That is coming up and so much more right here on GMA. All right, ahead in our next half hour of a GMSA cleanup underway after a fire at a bike shop on San Antonio's east side. We're going to have the latest from investigators what we know about what happened. And terrifying new video shows the moments a woman was thrown onto some subway train tracks in New York City. We have the latest on her condition. And of course, a lot of people out and about this Wednesday morning. Stephen has what you need to know before you head out the door. This morning, testimonies set to begin in our nation's capital from families of the victims of the Uvalde shooting. We're going to have a preview. And in your consumer headlines, you are never going to guess how much this basketball card, yes, just a basketball card, how much went for at auction. Hint, there's LeBron James card. Yeah, another hint, a lot. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at a nice 77 degrees for now. Let's enjoy that. Enjoy the moment. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and thank you for starting your Wednesday with us. It is June 8th, so I, I'm going to go to the basketball card. What is the basketball card that you would want more than anything else? Oh, that's hard. I feel like I know okay. your answer. Well, one of the three. Yeah, yeah Tim the, Duncan. Right, or Manu or Tony Parker, <laughs> or all three, right? Can they come as a package deal? Oh, I feel like that'd be pretty expensive. Yes. All right, you know what else is going to be expensive this month? Uh, oh, don't say it. Your electric bill? Electric <laughs> bill, Mike. Oh, my. So I've been doing a good job keeping it at 78 during peak hours. But that, yeah, that, that helps out. You know, a lot of times your air conditioner can't even keep up yeah. with the, the hot temperatures. So that's uh, the real downside. Yeah, do as much as you can to try and conserve energy. You know, if you can use ceiling fans uh, when you're in the room, don't leave them going when you're out of the room because they don't do anything. Uh, but when you're in there, ceiling fan is going to at least make it feel slightly cooler in the uh, the specific room. So we got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. 78 degrees still holding steady. 79 Stinson and mid upper 70s up there toward Canyon Lake. Lotus at 77, excuse me, 76 right now. And uh, humidity, yeah, it's still very, very humid out there. I think that may be a uh, erroneous reading coming in from Stinson. I don't believe the dew points drop down to 61. That would be nice, but we will see dew points drop down later on today. So we're not going to have that much of a heat index to deal with. Right now there is a slight bit though. It feels like 81 at Castroville and 80 at Stinson out the airport and also Pleasanton. Mold is on the low side. The updated pollen count is going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures, we may fluctuate another degree or two up or down and all those clouds, they're going to start to clear on out by later on this morning. We'll make it up to the upper 80s and 90 at noon and then continue up at about 10, 11 degrees to that. The normal high temperature is 92, so we're going to be just about 10 above normal. 101, that's going to be a new record high. We don't have any formal uh, heat advisories posted, but even though, you know, it's not on a, a graphic or a map, you got to really take it easy if you're outside. Anything that looks like not 
triple digits in the forecast. We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's up? Hey, flashing lights out here, Mike 35 at Splashtown. Not really something we'd like to see as we're starting uh, so the 6 a.m. hour, but you can see that closer look does show it appears to be a stalled vehicle that was reported. Uh, thankfully, it's not causing so much of an issue for traffic, but just check out how vehicles are slowing down. That's essentially what you should do and make sure to move over. Uh, that is, we want to make sure we give those first responders plenty of room, but it is still very dark outside, so just remember they could be out they're working to assist that stranded driver. Hopefully this will wrap up pretty soon, but again, move over, slow down. Those are the rules of the road. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're seeing here on the map because another stall we're adding to that list is right here off of Loop 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Now those eastbound lanes of 410 aren't showing any yellow or red, so that's some good news. But again, as a reminder, make sure you check your vehicles and make sure you're fully gassed up before you get on the get out on the roadways. Now let's go ahead and show you that bird's eye view of the map at 603. Nothing else to talk about, so some good news especially if you have to head out the door, maybe grab that early cup of coffee or hey, maybe a breakfast taco, but thankfully no delays just yet. And if you're traveling into San Antonio, we have those travel times for you right now. Thankfully, it is still pretty pleasant heading in from Pleasanton with 28 minutes on I-37 northbound. Now coming in from Highway 90 to West Loop 1604, we're looking at just 18 minutes and that arrival from Lytle should be about a 17 minute drive for our friends coming in on I-35 northbound. So there are your travel times, but back over here, 35 at Splash. Town. Again, remember to follow those rules of the road. Move over, slow down. We have those first responders out there working to assist that driver. Hopefully we'll see some better news coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. And right now we have a live picture from Washington, D.C., and that's where survivors and families of victims killed inside of Robb Elementary will be later this morning testifying on the gun violence epidemic in the U.S. So Alexandria, Lexi Rubio's parents, they're going to be sharing their testimony virtually while Maya Sario, a fourth grader who covered herself in her friend's blood, she pretended to be dead. She is testifying in person at the Rayburn House Office building. Dr. Roy Guerrero, Uvalde's only pediatrician, will testify as well. He told ABC's News that it is his duty to the children to share his experience. As we say in the Hippocratic Oath, to do no harm, right? And I feel doing nothing is being neglectful to that oath. The U.S. House Oversight or Committee on Oversight and Reform is made up of Democratic and Republican members. Each witness on the first panel will testify for just five minutes. Committee members will not be asking questions out of respect for their time and the trauma that they've been through. Make sure to stay right here on KSAT 12 throughout the morning. Coming up later, we're going to be bringing you the special coverage on everything happening in Washington, D.C. That begins at 9 a.m. We also have a crew in D.C., so look for live reports in our later newscasts and, of course, on KSAT.com. Governor Greg Abbott is steering away from gun restrictions, and instead he is focusing on school security. I Watch Texas is a system that allows you to alert authorities online, over the phone, or through an app. You would use it if you see anything or anyone acting suspiciously. So it's been around for years, but the governor wants the program promoted more heavily. And in Uvalde last night, one member was noticeably absent from a special city council meeting, School District Police Chief Pete Adendando. Our Jonathan Coto joins us live. And Jonathan, surely a lot of people have been asking why didn't he show up and what have you been able to learn? Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. A lot of people have been asking and wondering why Redondo wasn't present at that city council meeting in Uvalde, including some of the parents who lost children in the shooting. Now, also, and even the mayor himself couldn't really explain why Pete Arredondo wasn't at the meeting. And at that meeting, the mayor himself couldn't provide an update on the investigation because he hadn't received an update on that investigation now for over a week. Now, it's important to note that Arredondo was sworn in privately after facing criticism for his actions or in actions as the lead commander responding to the shooting. Peter Hernando was elected by the people in his district. So it, it's up to his district and his people and it's up to Mr. Hernando to what he wants to do. I can't speak for him and I'm not gonna try to speak Why for him. Why is he here? The, I, I can't, again, I can't answer that. So I don't know. Now today, the Uvalde mayor is expecting the Department of Justice to name a team to review the investigation. Of course, this is a situation that we're going to continue to follow closely. And you can read more on this story by visiting our website, KSAT.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
New York police arrested a man after they say he threw a woman off a subway platform. That incident caught on camera. Now we want to warn you, some may find the video difficult to watch from ABC's special report. Now NYPD tweeted out the video showing the Sunday attack. 30 year old Theodore Ellis is in custody for grabbing that woman from behind and throwing her onto the subway tracks. She is recovering in the hospital. Ellis is charged with assault and reckless endangerment. Well, back here at home, like we've been talking about, and I'm sure like you've been feeling, the heat continues to be a big story. So Haven for Hope is offering more help to help anyone who doesn't have shelter. They're offering mist fans in the courtyard and air conditioning inside the Haven for Hope facility. But they say they are in need of your help, specifically summer clothes. They're asking for shorts and t-shirts for men, women, and children. New and gently used items are welcomed. You can take your donation to the center on One Haven for Hope Way. And if you're looking to cool off in the pool this summer, you are not alone. However, the majority of city swimming pools remain closed. That is because there are not enough lifeguards. And right now on our website, we have a list of the pools and splash pads that are open. You can just head over to kset.com and look for this story. All right, morning consumer headlines. New warnings about just how long and how high inflation will get. So, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen speaking on Capitol Hill. She now says the Biden administration updating their inflation forecast. Previously, it had shown inflation running at about 4.7% this year. Clearly, that is incorrect because we've seen more than 8%. So now, Janet Yellen and the administration says it is likely to be higher. Your dollar isn't getting you what it once did. Shrinkflation is speeding up. For example, a small box of Kleenex that had 65 tissues a few months ago now has 60. Or Shabani Flip Yogurt is going from 5.3 ounces to 4.5. Experts say it's a way for companies to cover rising costs for raw materials. And it was what we've been talking about throughout the morning. So auctioneers are calling it the holy grail of sports collectibles, a one-of-a-kind LeBron James trading card. And guess how much this is going to sell for? Too much. <laughs> That's a good answer. It's expected <laughs> to sell for more than $6 million at auction. So the triple logo man card, it's a single issue, and it's pretty cool. It features the 18-time NBA All-Star LeBron James with patches from jerseys that LeBron wore with the Cavs, Heat, and Lakers. So when the card was issued, it set off a hunt among collectors. Some have compared to searching for, yes, Willy Wonka's golden ticket. <laughs> it was finally discovered after a year-long hunt during a live social media event. So $6 million seems like a lot. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with you on that one. Yeah. I mean, although very rare. Very rare. I mean, once you get that, you're really going to have to put it on display. I mean, a case, a light. A I mean, safe. A safe, <laughs> yeah, or that. Hide it away. <laughs> Time now, just about 6'11", 77 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, as testimonies on gun reform are set for this morning in Washington, victims of the Vivaldi mass shooting are still being laid to rest. We're going to tell you about the funeral service scheduled for today. And we're also going to show you terrifying security video that shows the moments a 12-year-old boy allegedly holds a gas station clerk at gunpoint. Also just ahead, the pain at the pump continues. We're going to tell you when experts say those gas prices may start to come down. Now let's take a quick live look out of the Alamo City. 77 degrees out there now. What are we, what are we calling this, like a cold 77? In comparison cool. to that cool, cool 77. Uh, triple digits again. How hot is it going to get? We're going to check it with Mike Oster in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. So, when was the last time you got gas? A couple of days ago. How bad was it? It was pretty bad. Yeah. It was painful. So, now on the crisis that's on just about everyone's mind inflation, and of course, what we're just talking about the record high gas prices. It looks like things may get worse before they get better. The U.S. Treasury Secretary is calling on Congress to take action. ABC's Andrew Dimber explains. This morning, Americans are spending $700 million more on gas every day than they were at this time last year. We now have 14 different states where the average has already surpassed that $5 gallon mark. 
and seeing some tremendous increases. In just the last week, the average price for gas in Michigan jumping 51 cents. In Indiana, up 48 cents. In Ohio, 46 cents. There's no relief in sight due to soaring demand overseas and supply concerns due in part to the war in Ukraine. And now, hurricane season could send prices surging even higher. This overall era of high prices could stick around for several years. Keep in mind, if a hurricane hits refineries or oil production, it could take months for supply to get back to normal. Airfares are also climbing due to higher fuel costs. The average cost of a domestic round trip is now $410 compared to $283 last June. We now are entering a period of transition. On Capitol Hill Tuesday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called the inflation we're seeing unacceptable. She urged Congress to provide more affordable housing and bring down prescription drug prices. And she pushed back against those who blame the Biden administration's spending policies, including pandemic stimulus checks, for fueling today's inflation. In designing a policy, there are various risks that need to be taken into account. Of course, inflation was one of them, but the overwhelming risk was that Americans would be scarred by a deep and long recession. And back to gas prices, we're fast approaching a national average of just about $5 per gallon. Analysts say that milestone will likely prompt more families to take a closer look at their spending habits. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And we want to know how you're dealing with the high price of gas right now. Over on our website, you can take a short survey. All right, so your answers will actually help us build our news coverage out of the price of gasoline around your needs. Just look for the article on ksat.com. All right, turn to the roadways. Steven, yes. we saw a lot of people out and about yeah. early at like 4.30. Yeah, uh, you know, it's been a busy morning, I would say, in terms of the commute. And we all, you know, we were also just talking about those gas prices, Max, those wallet woes, right? So if you have to head to the gas station, make sure you do it early enough because right now traffic is getting a little bit busier. 35 at Splashtown. We saw some flashing lights out there the last time I talked to you guys. That was a stalled vehicle. And it does look like those first responders were able to help that driver out. So maybe it could have been some trouble with with their engine or their windshield wipers. We don't know, right? But we do know that we want to make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway this morning. Uh, let's show you the wide look at the map because things look fine just uh, so far, but we know that there are those active construction spots and we're going to continue to bring those up. Here's one that we want to mention to you that's going to be taking place a little bit later this morning. 410 on the west side of San Antonio concrete work that is actually happening. Now this is current up until June 20th, so we still have a few weeks to go of this, but keep in mind textile reports that will start at 8 in the morning and last until five in the afternoon, but we know those crews get out there a little bit earlier. Uh, during that time, we can expect an alternating closure of the turnarounds in both directions right there at Gulebra Road. So of course, plan your commute accordingly, but as I mentioned, make sure your vehicles are also working properly. Stalls seem to be the trending trouble at this hour, but thankfully right now, all is clear here off 35 at Splashtown, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Members two years ago, gas was three bucks less a gallon. Well, yeah. Stephen had a good point where he's like, if you want to fill up early in the morning, start the day off right, but also to beat yeah. the heat, Mike. Well, yeah. that, that's Couple true. I mean, any, if you have to do anything really outside, if you can yeah. do it earlier on in the day before we, you know, really start to heat up, before the sun really starts to, to come down or starts to shine down on you, because that then not only because temperatures, what the the air temperature is, and that's what we feel. But when you're outside in the direct sun, add 10 to 15 degrees to some of these numbers because that's what you feel since the sun is heating you up. 78 degrees as of right now, uh, mid upper 70s all around the area. Look at the top number, dew points at 70. So a lot of a uh, lot of humidity out there, a lot of moisture in the air, wind out of the south at 13 miles per hour. It's going to be breezy again today, probably not quite as breezy as the past few days. We did have our morning clouds and most of them cleared on out, but right there around sunset, Mr. McClellan over by uh, Woodlawn Lake, got a beautiful view of some of those uh, colors with a few of those high, uh, mid high clouds still hanging around here. So beautiful picture, thank you for that. 82 at 9 o'clock. We'll see a lot more sunshine. 84 at 10 o'clock. And then by noon, we're already going to be up to 90 and then continue up 3, 4 degrees per hour. And we are going to be topping off at 101 later on today, which is going to tie the record for today's date. At least it won't be 104 like the past couple of days, which was the situation yesterday. Hondo, Pleasanton, both at 105 and 110 in Catula. Today, temperatures will be 
and maybe a degree or two down from where they have been the past couple of days. We're looking at upper 90s and low hundreds all around the metropolitan area still on average uh, 8, 10 degrees above respective normal high temperatures. That area of high pressure is keeping things just stuck in this this rut, if you will, keeping us very, very hot, keeping any sort of rain away from us, and it keeps all these upper level wind lines. That's where the main flow in the atmosphere is. That stays way up there to the north of us. That's where any rain would be. Um, obviously, that's kind of the dividing line between cooler air and the very hot air down here. So that just stays up there. Notice how this thing does not move. So our weather does not change all the way through the rest of the week into the weekend. Now, by next week, it does show signs that this high center wants to kind of shift off to the east of us a little bit more. And so that would put us in this around the clockwise flow into more of a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. So there's some thinking, some hope that that would then help to drop temperatures down a little bit, maybe get some disturbances trying to come on in here to give us a chance at some rain. But that's, uh, I think, wishful thinking as of right now. But we'll, we'll just kind of wait and see is if anything will change by next week. But as of right now, it looks like we are going to be stuck in triple digits all the way through at least the middle of next week. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today makes it up to 101, ties the record. A lot of sunshine out there Again, breezy. No formal uh, heat advisories are posted today. But obviously, if you're outside, like we we're talking about, if you want to you know, fill up the tank, walk the dog, anything trying it earlier on in the day so you don't just get overwhelmed by that heat when you step outside. Triple digits all the way through the weekend into next week. A couple of those days are going to be a lot closer to hitting or setting new records than the other days. And again, like I said, I don't know if that's a good thing. Don't forget, Tuesday is Flag Day. That's so right. It's kind of like a laugh now, cry later kind of thing. Sort of like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how you put that Drake song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. That's Aubrey Graham. He's a singer, just in case yes. you didn't know. Okay. 622, 77 degrees. Not all those albums. <laughs> and still ahead on GMSA, a new high tech Taco Bell is set to open today in the Midwest. We're going to tell you if one could be coming to San Antonio. Whoa. This is the moment for a brand new treatment for moderate to severe eczema. Sabinko, now FDA approved. 100% steroid free, not an injection. Sabinko is a once daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And Sabinko provides clearer skin and helps relieve itch. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers, serious heart-related events, and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with JAK inhibitors. This is the moment, but we've only just begun. A new innovation from Pfizer. Speak with your doctor about Sabinko today. And happening today, a one-of-a-kind Taco Bell restaurant opens in Minneapolis. Four drive through lanes have vertical delivery tubes, which brings the orders from the kitchen to your vehicle, kind of like a bank. So customers can order at a kiosk in the drive through lane or through an app. Taco Bell hinted the new restaurant will be coming to other states very soon. So Stephen Cavazos brought up a great point earlier this morning. I don't think we need a Taco Bell like that here in San Antonio because we have so many great other taco options. Well, that's true as well. But I guess, you know, maybe for the people who do go to Taco mm. Bell, this will be quicker and faster. Boom. What did they, two minutes? Yeah. Is that what they're trying Pretty to get Pretty quick. But yeah. like I said, I don't know about those nachos. They're going to be everywhere. <laughs> Time now, 626, 77 degrees out. And still head on GMSA. Security camera video showing the scary moment a gas station clerk is robbed at gunpoint by a 12 year old. We're going to tell you more about it. This morning, testimony set to begin at our nation's capital. We expect to hear from families of the victims of the Uvalde shooting. We're going to have a preview. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, June 8th, and we broke a record yesterday as far as that heat and looking to maybe break another record today as well. I don't know if these are good records to break though, Mike. Uh, 
just to yeah. say that we did. <laughs> Again, if you're going to be up in triple digits, do you want to break records? Just so it means, I don't know. But we are going to be tying a record again uh, today. We're still going to be in triple digit temperatures. And it's not looking like we'll hit 104. That's what really matters. Uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here right now. Still going to be very high. We've got a lot of humidity around here this morning. Temperatures at 78 and that number, which did dip down into the upper 50s, low 60s yesterday, came back up. The dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Wind out of the south at 13 miles per hour. Still breezy today, not quite as, as windy as the past couple of days. Here's our, uh, well, the moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and this is helping out with some of those low mid-level clouds that we have around here. And they'll be sticking around throughout mid-morning, then start to clear on out. Molds on the low side from yesterday's allergen uh, count, pollen count. That's going to, the updated reading is going to come out in about, uh, say, an hour, hour and a half or so. So some clouds hanging around here this morning. Very warm, very humid. We are about six, seven degrees above normal. And then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny, 101. That's going to tie the record for this date. So that'll be three records in a row that have either been set or tied. And then triple digit temperatures continue tomorrow as well as on Friday and go into the weekend. Still going to be blazing hot and it's still looking like the triple digit readings are going to be uh, going on into at least about the middle part of next week. We'll see if we can muster up any sort of change down the road. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Not a whole lot, Mike. It's actually been a pretty nice morning as we've been seeing here on the roadways. I-10 at the Y really like this shot here. You can see the skyline of San Antonio and you can see the drivers in this shot making their way through without any trouble. So thankfully we've not spotted major issues that would cause any trouble for drivers that have to head out in the next few moments. So maybe go grab that cup of coffee, but give yourself plenty of time. Let's talk about what we're seeing here on the map. We talked about construction. We did have maybe one or two crashes that quickly cleared out, but the trending problem really has been a lot of these stalls that we've been seeing around town. We have a few more detected right here along I-35 and 1604 over on the northeast side of San Antonio. So uh, we're not sure what's causing these stalled vehicles, but if it is gas, we talked about gas a lot this morning. Make sure you fuel up early. We know that it is a pain at the pump, but it's better to get it done early rather than have any issues later down the line, especially when the morning and commute starts to get a little bit busier. Let's talk about those travel times because of your destination is going to be the Alamo City. Thankfully, almost green across the board. But for our friends in Bolverde, we are seeing those usual slowdowns. If you watch us every morning, you know, we usually start to see 28 minutes uh, if you're heading on 281 southbound traveling into the downtown area. But that is due to a lot of that work that is taking place on 281. So pack that patience and remember to be kind to those crews out there working to improve the roadways. But uh, one last look here at I-10 at the Y. The morning is up. People are people are up as the morning is moving. We'll continue to give you those updates right here on GMSA. Max Steph. Thank you, Stephen. We now go to Uvalde, where funeral services continue to the victims of Robb Elementary, the mass shooting that happened at the school. Today, services will be held for 10-year-old Annabelle Rodriguez. Her family says she was a sweet young girl whose favorite color was blue especially on butterflies. She also enjoyed watching TikTok videos and spending time with her sisters and her family. The funeral service for Annabelle will be at noon at Rushing Knolls, followed by a ceremony at Hillcrest Cemetery. Now, funeral and visitation services in Uvalde will continue over the coming days. We're going to have the schedules for all of the victims posted on our website at ksat.com. And now we're taking a live look at the nation's capital. That is where the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform is set to hold a hearing later this morning on gun violence. That starts at 9 this morning. And this is new video of Mia Serio from Uvalde traveling to D.C. to testify in this morning's hearings. An 11-year-old was in school that fateful day. So we're told she actually covered herself in her classmates' blood. She played dead, doing all she could to survive this terrifying shooting. She's going to be one of the several accounts in an effort to put a face on the impact of gun violence across the country. Our Lee Waldman, also on Capitol Hill, discussing what we should expect out of this hearing. The bipartisan committee is going to hear directly from the people impacted by mass shootings, including the families of victims and survivors of the Robb Elementary School shooting. There needs to be a change. There's no doubt about it. They know. They know. It's been exactly two weeks since Amory Jo Garza was killed inside of her classroom at Robb Elementary. Now her father, Alfred Garza, is demanding change by elected officials. It's about people right now. It's what it's about. And um, there's no gun out there that's worth more than my daughter's life. 
While he won't be present at Wednesday's hearing inside of the Rayburn House office building on Capitol Hill Wednesday, fourth grader Maya Cerillo will be on the first panel. She's previously described covering herself in her friend's blood and pretending to be dead so she wouldn't be shot. Dr. Roy Guerrero, Uvalde's only pediatrician, will be here too, telling ABC News it's his duty to the children to testify. As we say in the Hippocratic Oath, to do no harm, right? And I feel doing nothing is being neglectful to that oath. The parents of 10-year-old Alexandria Lexi Rubio will testify virtually. The U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform is made up of Democratic and Republican members. The Texas members have all shared their condolences for the families on social media outlets, but have not shied from sharing what they believe the issue is. North Texas Congressman Pat Fallon writing in part, quote, We must harden our classrooms. Children should feel safe when they go to school, but taking everyone's guns is not the answer, unquote. Senator John Cornyn is not on the committee, but when asked about raising the age limit on assault-style weapons, he says there are several discussions in the works. I think a, a focus on mental health and criminal background history is probably going to be the most productive. Each witness in the first panel will only testify for five minutes. Committee members won't be asking any questions out of respect for their time and the trauma they experienced. On Capitol Hill, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And this morning we are hearing from the Uvalde County Justice of the Peace. He knew some of the victims and had to go into the school. He went into one of the classrooms only to hear the haunting sounds of cell phones ringing inside of the children's backpacks and a cell phone on the desk ringing that belonged to one of the teachers killed, Irma Garcia. When I went into Irma's room and um, I was there um, assessing the situation and, and we were looking at the victims and Dr. Molina was there and the cell phones kept ringing in the backpacks and on her desk. That broke my heart because I knew that parents were looking for their kids. He also had to ask parents for DNA samples in an effort to identify their children. And coming up later this morning, we are going to be bringing you special coverage on everything happening in D.C. that is set to start at 9 a.m. We also have a crew there, so look for reports in our later newscast and on our website at KSET.com. And Uvalde native Matthew McConaughey making an appearance in Washington, D.C. The actor at the White House just yesterday calling on Congress to, quote unquote, reach a higher ground when it comes to gun control legislation. McConaughey specifically calling on Congress to bolster background checks for gun purchases, asking to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 to 21 years old from the current 18 years old. You can read more about his visit right now on KSAT.com. Back here at home, leaders in Bear County are focusing on preventing gun-related deaths, and they hope more money for resources will help. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live with all the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Commissioners are moving forward with a multi-million dollar plan. About $37 million will be going towards gun violence prevention and mental health resources. Now, those funds are broken up into four main parts. The first... Money for gun locks, safety devices, and the setup of distribution centers. Commissioners also want an education effort to teach citizens about responsible gun ownership and safe storage. Money will also go towards mental health programs, law enforcement training, more inpatient psychiatric beds, and a helpline. And finally, funding will also go towards countywide mental health services with focus on schools. Now, Stephanie, this is an effort to break the sti stigma in getting help for mental health. For more information, a detailed report on this story, you can visit our website, KSAT.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, cleanup is underway after a fire at a bicycle shop on the city's east side. So take a look. This was the scene around 1015 last night. This is East Commerce, not too far from South New Braunfels Avenue. A crews on the scene telling us it was an electrical problem that sparked the fire. They were able to get the fire knocked out rather quickly. No injuries reported. Damage is estimated to be about $10,000. And cleanup also underway at a home on the south side after another fire. This one breaking out around 4 a.m. on a Palo Alto Road and Vincent Street just inside Loop 410. Crews out there saying it appears that someone had set the fire on the outside of the home. No one inside at the time. Firefighters able to put out the blaze very quickly. Damage is estimated between $20,000 and $30,000.
Also new this morning, two men are in the hospital after an overnight rollover crash. This happened just before one in the morning in the southbound lanes of I-35 near North New Braunfels Avenue. Now after the crash, two people from a nearby bar helped and pulled the driver and passenger out of those vehicles. Now both victims were taken to the hospital and they're expected to be okay. Police believe that racing may have been a factor in this crash. Caught on camera, the scary moments a suspect robs a gas station clerk at gunpoint. Here's the thing, that suspect, just 12 years old. Take a look. This all unfolding in Hartford, Connecticut. Police there say the suspect you see in the video stole a handgun from his stepfather's locked gun case, used it to steal nearly $3,800 in cash from that gas station. Officers later finding the suspect, they say he did not resist arrest. So far, the motive to the robbery seems to be unclear, but the suspect allegedly telling investigators he did not do it for the money, that he just wanted to go to juvie. Right now, he is facing seven felony charges. Time now, just about 642, 77 degrees out. And just ahead on GMSA, we're gonna introduce you to a bright young woman from East Central High School. Welcome back. Continuing with our great grad series today, we look at a high school senior who is far beyond her years, and she's described as a natural born leader. So this student is coming out of East Central High School, and our Jonathan Goto joins us live this morning to talk more about her. And now, Jonathan, we know you have worked on a number of great grad stories, but you tell us that this one was a real standout. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Max, that's right. You know, photojournalist Stephen Chavez and I had the opportunity to spend some time with Amina Washington. And I can tell you from the moment we arrived on campus, she was just a go getter, a hard charger that really led the way and really told a great story. Let's take a listen. Amina Washington was born in Nebraska to military parents and as a military child, moved from state to state on a regular. We moved around a lot. I went to Maryland, I went to Arizona, and then um, you know, they got divorced. I moved in with my dad in Texas, and I came to East Central. As if starting high school didn't already come with a number of fears and challenges for Washington, starting freshman year was beyond daunting. She'd be the new girl at East Central High. So it was kind of interesting, interesting dynamic. Didn't really know a lot of people. And you know, when you move from place to place, you don't know if people are gonna like you or understand your jokes. So I was very anxious and shy. But it would be only a matter of time before Washington would learn to make East Central her new home. So I joined ROTC my freshman year, ninth grade year, and I didn't really know if I would fit in or I didn't know if I would be too weird or people would understand me. So I just kind of sat by myself, but then I slowly got more involved into the program. And it was exactly that involvement with JROTC that would help ease the anxiety of being the new kid at a new school in a whole new state. The program made making friends a little easier for Amina. So I felt comfortable to open up about my life and about my journey and how I got there. And it made some really real friendships and some deeper connections than I've had anywhere else. Washington has since become captain of the JROTC Cyber Patriot team, leading the team to multiple qualifications for competition in the national level semifinals. I was not very good at first, but um, I learned and I kept persisting and kept trying to get better at it. And eventually I became, you know, a bigger part of the team in helping coach other students and other cadets in the program. She has also been able to balance schoolwork along with forming part of the Beta Club, Rider Skilled, University Interscholastic League, and the East Central Go Green team, all while maintaining a 4.0 GPA, landing her a spot as a member of the National Honor Society. Amina um, in ninth grade would not be here right now. I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't have the motivation to be where I am now. But I'm so happy that, you know, this time at East Central has made me into the person I am today. Amina Washington will be off to Texas A&M University at Prairie View in just a few weeks, where she plans to major in computer science and cybersecurity and plans to one day make her mark in the world working for the Department of Defense, the NSA, or NASA. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Jonathan. Well, let's get a look at the roadways. Right now, we do have a salt vehicle there off 30 I-10 at Hackberry. Pardon me, as we get a wider look at Transguide. Now, we're not able to see it because of the signage up there, but uh, there are some flashing lights. It looks like a TxDOT Hero Truck working to assist that driver. Uh, that is what we've really been spotting. A lot of those stalled vehicles out there, so just make sure you check yours before you get out on the road. Quick remind, a quick uh, heads up, we do have some road debris off I-35 southbound at Ritterman Road, so make sure if you see that, you move over or slow down. But back here, just some car trouble. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and have more updates before the show wraps up, Mike. We were talking about yesterday. Thank you, sir. How it was the first quarter moon. Beautiful picture of that. It is, of course, in its waxing uh, cycle. And so the full moon is going to be in just a little bit less than a week on Tuesday on Flag Day. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, I think we need to clean that lens. But as you can see, it is kind of hazy out there. Some of our morning clouds were already starting to see some sunshine peak on through 78 in town, 79 Stinson low to mid 70s out towards the uh, hill country. And we've got a well, an OK breeze right now out of the south at 10, 15 miles per hour. It will still be breezy today. I don't think as windy as the past couple of days. Temperatures will continue up and through the upper 70s, low 80s over the course of the morning. We'll end up at 90 at noon. A lot of sunshine and then finish up the day 101 new or excuse me, tying the record for today's date. Of course, the past couple of days, both 104 and both of those were new record high temperatures for yesterday and the day before that uh, satellite picture. All the clouds up to the north of us and nothing is coming around here because you can see all these clouds are moving just about straight west to east. Checking out the tropics real quickly. Nothing. I mean, we've got a few clouds out there in the Atlantic Basin, but Hurricane Center is not picking up anything or even in the next five days. It doesn't look like there's going to be anything forming out there as far as the tropics are concerned. That high is sitting right on top of us and that's what's pushing down in the atmosphere and that's what's keeping things so hot and this thing just does not move over the next few days. So temperatures don't move over the next couple of days. We're going to stay in triple digits. These lines right up there to the north. That's kind of the main flow where all the activity is and that stays well up there in the north northern portion of the country. The hope is that as this tries to slide off to the east a bit more going into next week, that we would get more of a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe a little bit of a disturbance would try and slide on through here and give us at least a chance at uh, some rain or slightly cooler temperatures by the latter part of next week. But right now, got to say at best, it's wishful thinking. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature 101 set there ties the record pardon me and a bit of a breeze out of the south today we stay in the triple digits for high temperatures all the way in through rest of the week the weekend and right now through flag day on tuesday steph max we will power through it mike Thank you. Thanks, Mike. 651, 77 degrees south. And just a reminder this morning that we're going to be bringing you special coverage on everything happening in D.C. It will begin at 9 a.m. We will also have a crew in D.C. So look for those reports in our later newscasts and on KSET.com. And let's take one quick live look out of the Alamo City. Oof. A lot going on out there. You can almost feel the heat coming in. We're going to check in with Mike and Steven one last time in just a bit. In your GMA first look, as catalytic converter thefts continue to rise, many states are now enacting laws that they hope will deter thieves. Those details are coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSA 12. All right, if you're about to head out the door, Stephen Cavazos has everything you need to know. Well, we do have some road debris out here. Max, Steph, let's get a look here. One last look at Transguide. Blurry shot, but you can see those flashing lights out there. There you go. Uh, we do have some road debris that was detected in that area, and our friends at Transguide saying that's going to be clearing up pretty soon, but we want to make sure that you stay alert. We still see those uh, responders out there. Text hero truck. Keep in mind that's off I-35 South Bend at Ritterman Road, but other than that, things to seem to be moving just fine as we get one last look here at Transguide. We're going to continue to watch the roads closely. It's been a pretty nice morning, Mike Osterhage. Nice and warm and humid and then hot later on today. There's some of our morning clouds still 78 degrees out there at the airport. Six above normal 90 at noon 101 ties a record today and southerly wind 10 to 20 miles per hour and we're going to stay in triple digits all the way through the rest of the week. All right, triple digits again. We'll, we will <laughs> yep. survive. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here at 9 a.m. Remember, we're going to have that special coverage of the hearings in Congress on gun violence across the country. So hopefully we we'll see you back here at 9 a.m.